this first thing in the morning when you're fresh or a day where you can just block everything off and your duty is to stay still and dream. Dream about where you really want to be, how you want to live. Do you really want to be running ragged, you know, teaching 60 hours a week? Or what if you could cut that in half but make twice as much? Is that possible, you know? And so dream about what would the best schedule in the world be? Maybe it's a combination of finding better students who are willing to pay twice as much, but you work half the time. Or maybe it's writing that book that you've been dreaming about writing, right? But take some time to dream about your ideal life. You're watching Tim Topham TV, the Piano Teaching Podcast. This is episode number 42. Hi everyone and thanks again for watching this episode of Tim Topham TV wherever you are in the world on a treadmill on a bike um, in your car at the beach uh, on the way to the space station whatever it is wherever you are thank you so much for tuning in it means a lot and I love the fact that so many of you are getting so much out of these uh, interviews that I'm having with people I'm loving it so I'm more than happy to continue doing it now today's interview is actually the first interview with a repeat guest and my guest today is the fantastic Hugh Sung uh, who was in an earlier podcast episode when we were talking about the future of piano teaching uh, hopefully I'll be able to look that up very very quickly if I can't we'll make sure we pop it in the show notes as a link um, Hugh He's going to be talking today, and we're going to be talking about crushing your studio business because this guy has done exactly that. Now, before I tell you a little bit more about Hugh and our conversation today, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is The Inner Circle. And the Inner Circle is my piano teacher's community. It's a private online community for only the best piano teachers, people like you who are listening to this podcast. Teachers who are dedicated, committed, eager to learn more and eager to share ideas. So in the Inner Circle, you will find not only a fantastic array of resources um, and videos and things produced by me, but you will also have access to all the resource produced resources produced by all the members and I can tell you now some of the discussions we've been having about improvising activities um, creative beginner kind of approaches and some of the PDFs and games and activities that teachers have been loading have been phenomenal and I can't thank all the members enough for the amazing job they're doing sharing it's exactly why I put together the community in the first place and I really hope that you'll consider being a part of it so to find out more you can watch a video of me explaining what you get and you'll be able to see everything on one page just head to timtopham.com forward slash community. This episode is also sponsored by the Forte School of Music. And many of you will know the founder and one of the directors of Forte from previous podcasts and a number of blogs on timtopham.com, and that's Paul Myatt. So Forte School of Music has been a huge success story in Australia with around 4,000 students and schools in all major capital cities. They are currently looking for entrepreneurial music teachers who are interested in building a successful business in Australia or other countries with the opportunity to be the master franchisor in their territory. Forte schools can build to the size you're able to manage. Some schools are small with just a couple of hundred students, while others have nearly a thousand students and a million dollar turnover. The key to success after being in business for 22 years is quality, the courses and systems, but most importantly, the teachers who offer the pedagogically sound curriculum. To find out more about Forte, head to fortemusic.com.au slash business. My guest today, Hugh Sung, is a pianist, he's an author, he's a techie, and an entrepreneur. As a pianist, Hugh has performed around the world and has over a dozen records on iTunes. His love of technology led to co-founding AirTurn, it's a company I recommend for Bluetooth page turners, and uh, a number of different um, holders and gadgets and all sorts of things for tablets and computers. Hugh currently teaches hundreds of students, yes you heard that right, through his online school at Artistworks and he hosts a weekly podcast called A Musical Life and he also helps musicians become entrepreneurs through a mastermind community of his own at A Musical Life. Now if you haven't heard the podcast from Hugh, make sure you check it out. I was very, very honoured to be a guest of his in a recent episode so you can find out more about that when you listen to today's episode 
episode, uh, we'll give links to all the things you need to know about. Now, while I think about it, I've just had a look up, um, is this the future of piano teaching was the podcast that Hugh first appeared on. It was way back, episode number 13, so over a year ago now. Thank you, Hugh, for coming on a second time. We're talking about completely different things, and I know you're going to be inspired and intrigued and just ready to blitz your business in your studio. So here is Hugh Sung, my fantastic friend and guest on today's podcast. So, Hugh Sung, you've already been on the podcast. You're my first repeat guest. Welcome to the show. Oh, oh, thank you. So, what an honor, and it's great to be back on your show. Something tells me we're going to be repeating each other many, many times in the future because you're, you're such an awesome you, – by the way, congratulations on the Inner Circle. What a fantastic community and a great service for – piano teachers all over the world. So congratulations on such a great site. Well, thank you very much. And I'm glad we can use this as the uh, introduction to you as one of my expert teachers. I've literally just invited Hugh Sung into the community. So he'll be uh, in there and in the forums. Um, and we'll find out a bit more about what Hugh's been doing too, because it all interrelates. And as you say, yes. we were just talking before we uh, started recording today. And there's definitely a lot of synergies between what we're doing. And I can't wait to see what the future holds for us. Absolutely. All right. So look, my podcast. Uh, viewers are going to remember you from episode 13 we talked about the question was is this the future of piano teaching and we're talking about all the online kind of teaching and how what technology is enabling um, us to do these days but today different tack we're talking business this is part of my business month so can you give everyone just a little bit of your background um, in relation to the business side of what you do we all know you're a fabulous teacher and a pianist what about the business side of things it's interesting the business side of things was really led by my love of technology. And that's a long story. There's actually a, a really neat podcast interview I did or an NPR radio interview I did with Daisha Clay over at uh, the Classical Classroom. So you might want to check out that episode. I give a full story of that. But my love of technology led me to develop page turning pedals for digital sheet music. This is We're talking back in 2001. This is almost a decade before the iPad came out. But I was, I was probably best known for being one of the very first professional pianist who was completely paperless. And because of that, I started developing or experimenting with pedals for turning pages because you can only see one page at a time on these iPad or computer screens. And so that led me in 2008 to co-found a company, a little company called AirTurn. Which and <laughs> all my viewers will know about AirTurn because I love what you guys do. So, Thank yes, you. if you're not familiar, Hugh is one of the founders of AirTurn. Yes. And so I started that with Lester Karpless. And we went from a scrappy little company to a company that sold these really digital accessories, but primarily the wireless page turning pedals, eventually to selling all over the world. We're in guitar center stores all over the United States. We're represented in Europe. And it's, it's, it was an incredible journey. And really that experience being with AirTurn taught me so much about really the day in, day in, day out, what it's like to be an entrepreneur, to be a business person, to run a company. But then uh, eventually, uh, I, you know, personal things happened and I, I decided it was time for me to step out, step away from air turn. And uh, then I started teaching online with Artist Works. So I'm actually an, all, one of their online teachers and I have a couple hundred students around the world. I think last time I talked to you, we had a, a smaller number. And so I think I've at least doubled double and a half since then, so which has been nice. So, and you've just passed your work. thousand upload, thousand That's video right. upload, I remember you. Thousand yeah. videos. So I've been doing that and I've really, really enjoyed working with, you know, I think one of the things I love is, number one, being able to reach so many people with my teaching. But I also, I love the technology because it allows me to be hyper-efficient with my time. So people are thinking, how in the world do you teach 200, 250 students? Well, I don't spend 250 hours a week. There certainly aren't enough hours in the week. But this technology allows me, the video exchange learning system allows me to hyper-focus my time so that I can personally teach these students, but in, in a very unique way. So I love that technology, the video exchange technology. And kind of coinciding with that, uh, I had the itch to do more of my own thing. So now in recent, back in November, I launched a brand new podcast called A Musical Life. And through A Musical Life, I started reconnecting with all of my old friends that I performed with some wonderful musicians and uh, Pulitzer Prize winning composers, Grammy Award winning musicians. 
And it's been incredible. In fact, uh, I think last, last month we reached our 60,000 60, downloads for the month of March. How cool wow. is that? And That's I just awesome. got contacted. I just got contacted by Sony. Guess who I get to interview next month? I saw it on your uh, community. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get to interview Yo Yo Ma. Ma. How cool is that? I am so excited. So the show is growing really nicely, and that has become. The, the, the platform for my newest business venture, which is a musical life mastermind, which is where I get to talk about what we're talking about here and helping musicians learn how to take control of their own lives by becoming entrepreneurs. Fantastic. Now, I, I want to just be really careful that we don't get all the piano teachers around the world switching off, you know, all this talk about CEO this and business that. We've yes. got to make sure, I think, that we keep it uh, relevant and related. Why is this business mindset and the discussion around business important to people who are, you know, just running their studio with their, their 30, 40 kids, whatever it is, or 100 kids if they're teaching group? Um, how is this relevant to them? It's interesting. During my years at Airturn, one of the most remarkable things I discovered was how artistic business is. And how we as artists have so many tools that can lead us to tremendous success in business. I would say for the teacher who is happy and content with where they are with their studios, this may be completely irrelevant. But for the teacher who's feeling like, you know, I'm putting all this time teaching, you know, student after student, but I feel like I'm not getting ahead or I feel like there's so much more I could do. So I, you know, it's funny because I was at Curtis. I was on the faculty of the Curtis Institute of Music for 19 years. This is one of the greatest music schools in the world, right? But I was starting to feel like this is such a small place for me. I feel like my message, I really want to reach the world. And I only have 130, of course, of the top kids in the world, but still it felt like it was such a, a, a almost a, too small of an environment. I felt too restricted. And so for those teachers who feel like they have a bigger vision, than just their studio, who feel like they really feel like they can contribute to the larger world and have a, a broader imagination in terms of who they want to reach, their, their reach beyond just the students they're teaching immediately. I think this is where business, having a business mindset is not just about making money, but it's really the art of reaching more people more efficiently and crafting your message so that you truly make the world a better place. Mm, fantastic, yeah. And look, it's it's certainly one of the reasons that I started doing all the work that I'm doing, the blogging and the podcasting. You know, yes. you can only personally touch uh, a certain number of people in your life when That's you're right. doing it one on one. But uh, you know, you exactly. get online and you've got the audience is the world potentially. And, and look and look at the thousands of people you have impacted from your efforts. It's not like you're spending going meeting these 1000 people one on one but because you're leveraging these business techniques and technology your voice is being amplified around the world and so i mean what you've done tim is fantastic and you're inspiring people you're changing their lives you're making their lives better this is really the fruit of a great business and i think for teachers who feel that call i mean i think we as artists we all do don't we you know we've been trained to be our very best we train to perform we train to be perfect in in our craft and now, some, and for some of our teachers, we feel like I could do more. There's so much more that I could, so many more people that I could reach with what I know, or what I want to share. And that's where I think the business path is a wonderful tool if you take it from an artistic point of view. Mm, absolutely. Well, and thank you for your comments too. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, we talk, you talked just a moment ago about making money. Um, and I'm very conscious that the concept of making money is almost can be a little bit repellent sometimes yeah. to uh, d definitely music teachers, maybe not so much yeah. musicians because that's their livelihood, but for music teachers, it's like, no, no, you know, I'm, you know, and some people undercharge and you know, give away their time and things. What would you say to, to those teachers who are a little bit worried about this whole idea of, you know, I'm, I'm in business, I'm making money here, or I, I could be? Yeah, there's a fantastic book that I recommend to every musician, every artist. It's called Thou Shalt Prosper. By Rabbi Daniel Lapin. Do you know well, there you go. No, I don't. There you go. We'll put that in the show notes. Yes, thou shalt prosper. Now, this Dan, Rabbi Lapin does a phenomenal job of talking. Now, this is going to sound a little esoteric, but he does a great job of 
kind of exploring the spiritual aspects of business. That sounds kind of strange. What do you, spiritual business? Well, in terms of if you understand that at its best, business is really like we were talking about at the beginning of this, this uh, interview. It is your duty to share your gifts and talents with your fellow man. And the money, the transactions are really our certificate of, of appreciation. If you're doing a good job, you can measure that certificate. You think of money as certificates of, of appreciation. And so when he goes into great depth into showing the value of good ethical business that serves a higher purpose, that means mainly making the world a better place. As musicians, you know, we, I think simply from the fact that we just don't get exposed to basic business principles, that's just not a part of our training. We're so focused on the purity of our art, we don't see the artistic applications of business. And when we, and so that book is phenomenal. I highly recommend everybody take a look at it. It doesn't matter what, you know, what religion you come from. I mean, I'm a Christian myself. This is a rabbi who's writing this book, but really wonderful universal principles. And I think you're going to come away, your readers are going to come away really inspired to relook at their, their art and realize, you know, if I'm undercharging, I'm doing a disservice to not only myself, but to the other people because I'm devaluing the worth of what I have. Mm. And so that, yeah, you know, I think many musicians, you know, we would do what we do for free because we love it. That is a, that's a wonderful thing. But just because it's given away for free, it, in many ways it can devalue and people don't appreciate it as much as if we value it properly, get compensated fairly for our time, effort, training. It's not just an hour lesson that I'm giving to a student. I'm giving 40 years of my experience in that hour. So when you think of things in, in things in terms like that, then you start to realize, wait a minute, I, what I have to give is valuable, is worthwhile. And I think there's a bit of self, I think we're, we're many of us are self-conscious as artists. We don't feel like we deserve it. We mm, deserve to mm. be, be paid. You know, we, we feel like, you know, I, I hope they like what I give. And yep. I'll get what I can, whatever they feel I'm worth. But when you have the confidence to realize, no, you are worth you know, X, Y value, you know, and then you, you, you start to approach your teaching in a different light because you realize a higher purpose for what you're doing. Mm. Okay. So, I mean, let's say we've got some teachers who are going, you know, this sounds right. I think I've got some skills that I could just share with the world and let's hope that's the case. What, but, you know, maybe they're not confident podcasting or, um, you know, uh, starting a, a website or whatever it is, what, what would you say? What are some of the things that teachers could look to do to, as we've said, expand their sphere of reference and their their influence? What are some of those kind of business principles, I guess, that you've seen work? Well, the very first principle is to ask. Don't be afraid to ask questions. This is why your site is going to be such an invaluable resource. You know, I think particularly as piano teachers, we tend to be, you know, kind of castles to ourselves. Mm. And I know the, and I, I know older generations of teachers feel like they have secret knowledge and they don't want to share it with anybody, right? <laughs> yeah. And, so, and, and it's the same, thing. it's the same in schools around the world as classroom teachers are even worse in some ways, I think. Yeah. 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 And so they feel like, you know, my knowledge is my knowledge and I don't want anybody else to know. The problem becomes then that they, they, you know, they, they stop learning and they feel like, and also I think they feel like the, a, the act of asking will reveal quote unquote weakness, right? Oh, I, I'm supposed to know everything. If I ask, it may seem like I'm less than perfect. Mm -hmm. Again, it goes back to a lot of the artistic baggage we carry from our training, most of us. I think a lot of, a lot of uh, teachers can relate to what I'm saying. The very act of asking takes great courage, great humility. A tremendous potential. If you're not afraid to ask, you're going to learn, you're going to grow. You know, so you should be asking people in the inner circle, hey, can somebody give me some advice on how to build a website or how I can improve my website? Or, you know, what are some easy ways that I can market? I want to caution your teachers to, you know, you don't have to do everything. Again, <laughs> you know, as musicians, we feel like we have to master everything immediately. 
one thing at a time, just like we take one piece at a time, master that. We can take one piece of a business puzzle, but the first place is to ask. Don't be mm. afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to show that, hey, I don't know this, but I'm willing to learn. You'd be surprised when you're able to ask those questions and you come to Tim's website like you know what we're doing right now, you're going to learn and gain and grow. And in fact, the humility really is going to give you the connections you need. People say, hey, this is a real person. This is not somebody who's trying to pretend to know it all, mm. but they're willing to be relatable. And that can be a very powerful tool. So asking, networking, building relationships so that this is not just for referrals, but again, for growing the, our collective body of knowledge. You know, uh, what we do is so vital given the world. I mean, just look at the news, you know, look at our culture, look at the environment and so much despair and you know, frankly, uh, just a lot of awful things happening in the world. What we do is so vital. Mm. So we need to be supporting each other. We need more teachers. We need more teachers to be more gifted. We need them to have a stronger penetration into all aspects around the world. One of the things I'm really excited about with interviewing Yo-Yo Ma and the Silk Road Ensemble is really to explore their passion for changing the world through music and crossing political and cultural divides that typically separate through politics, through economics, through geography, through, through religion, but to see how music unifies. We are part of that vanguard. And so it's so vital for us to all participate and support each other to grow, to make the world a more beautiful place and to show that the world is not just these ridiculous political debates or, or, or this, you know, uh, 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 political snafu, but you know, it is much more than that. We, we can show the world a more beautiful human, human spirit through the students we impact and helping each other to do that. Mm. Talk about political snafu. You guys are having fun over there at the moment, aren't you? Goodness oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get started on that one. <laughs> <laughs> we should all sit them down and have give them a couple of uh, good piano lessons. Yeah, that's right. Teach them to listen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And become reasonable human beings, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, Hugh, I think, you know, one of the hardest things for teachers and the, the reason I wanted to run a business month was that uh, you know, piano teachers or music teachers in general are really hardworking. They slave away at what they do. They've studied for years. They're incredible masters of what they do and they give every sort of ounce of energy they have every day until they're exhausted. Um, and I have a lot of teachers say, um, you know, uh, Tim, I'm just, you know, how do I manage my time better? I'm so tired. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of drained. And so I guess I'm interested in, in talking business with you with some of these ideas in regard to um, what are some of the options for teachers who are feeling kind of worn out um, and a bit exhausted by what they do in ways they can kind of expand perhaps their offerings or increase their revenue for the time that they're spending. Have you got some sort of tips or ideas of things you've seen other teachers or perhaps people in your circles do? You know, it was, it's very interesting. Uh, I just heard a wonderful podcast. One of my favorite podcasts to listen to is 48 Days to the Work You Love with Dan Miller. And one of his recent episodes, he was addressing, uh, he was giving an example of a, of a coach, one of his life coaches, who was working, you know, a, a full-time job, absolutely exhausted, pouring herself into this job. And so he advised her to do something very interesting. Instead of working five days, he told her purposely cut down to four. And one day a week, he told her to work on her project. She wanted to put together, her dream was to put together a, write a book or develop a course. And he said, all right, you're going to work four days. And that one day a week, you're going to devote to your dream project. Well, that's a 20% cut in income, right? Mm -hmm. And so that sounds like, oh, I can't do that. I can't afford to lose a day of teaching. However, you know, he, and he gave her a deadline. You have to do this within a certain couple of, a certain number of months, right? So she was under the gun. She had to write this and come up with this. What happens then, the, the goal is going to be come up with this course, this online course or online book. And then she's going to sell it. Her goal is to sell to 250 customers at about $200 each. That money would double what she had lost from that one day during that time period. Instead of losing 20000 she would be making 
50,000. And 250 customers isn't a whole lot. Mm. But you think about that. You know, when you reshift your thinking and when you think about reallocating your time instead of, and as you know, musicians, I think a lot of us have gig mentality. We've got to get every job <laughs> to fill every hour and make as much money with every hour we have, right? Yep. yep. Even before doing this kind of four out of five day schedule, what I would even do is give yourself, if you can sacrifice one day, or even give yourself one extra hour in the morning, but purposely what I would call your dream day or your dream hour. It's first thing in the morning when you're fresh or a day where you can just block everything off and your duty is to stay still and dream. Dream about where you really want to be, how you want to live. Do you really want to be running ragged, you know, teaching 60 hours a week or what if you just cut that in half, but make twice as much? Is that possible? You know? And so dream about what would the best schedule in the world be? Maybe it's a combination of finding better students who are willing to pay twice as much, but you work half the time. Or maybe it's writing that book that you've been dreaming about writing, right? But take some time to dream about your ideal life. What you want is where you want to see yourself in three to five years. If you don't have a dream, you're just going to be chasing, you know, lesson hours until you are just drained and dry. But when you take the time to dream for yourself and allow your imagination to just go wild, then you can start to put together a game plan. And, and again, I would say, don't do it alone. Reach out to other members in the inner circle. You know, reach out to other, you know, look for other mastermind communities where you can find like-minded people and say, hey, Who's going to hold me accountable? Who's going to help me flesh out my dream? All right? You don't have to do this alone. This is why the online communities can be your best allies and really hold your feet to the fire to help you achieve your dreams. Mm. And then I would say dream, ask, then prepare to sacrifice for your dream. You know, whether it's one or two days a week, maybe just cut a few hours in a day. It is a financial sacrifice, but don't think of it as a sacrifice. Think of it as an investment. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, not just doing it arbitrarily, but have a game plan like we do with the illustration I just gave you. When you think of the num, think, you know, think through the numbers. All right. If I'm losing this much income, how much do I need to make back? And how much could I sell this for? Whatever it ends up being, whether it's a book, a course, a record, a movie, whatever you guys want to make, you know, so. Mm, yep. Uh, and uh, I, I've, you know, got quite a few um, members and friends, I guess, generally, as you have, who are just they're normal teachers who have just gone, you know what, I'm going to put together a course, a training course, I'm going to interview some people or I'm going to just give all my ideas on a particular topic um, and, you know, they've just thrown it out there and they're selling it and, it, you know, it's such an exciting thing to see happening and I think it's happening yes. more and more. Yes. Mm. No, Absolutely. What? I think you're touching on one of the hidden gems of sustainable online businesses. It's not necessarily, I mean, records are dead. You know, we, we make a record. It's just people are used to free music. Mm. Um, books, in a sense, are dead too. You really don't make money from books. What you make money with are relationships. Mm. Relationships, think about that. If you can connect and have a true community that values what you have to say, where you can contribute and everybody feels that they belong, that is really the new economy. And so when you, like what you're doing, Tim, with the inner circle, you're creating a vital community that can be a tremendous ongoing source of revenue. Mm. So I think when, rather than think of simply just, I'm going to make a product, think about what kind of relationships can I build? Who can I connect with? Because then whatever you make, once you have that community, you can make stickers, you could make, you know, sock puppets. The point, that, no, I'm, I'm being facetious, but the point is the community will be there to support you because you know what they need. They in turn give you the feedback. And then the product that you create really is an answer as a service tailored to help the people that you're connected with. So the new economy 
is the relationship. Mm, yeah, and you see it all the time in Facebook as well, don't you? I mean, the, the yes. proliferation of Facebook. There's a Facebook group for just about everything, and people like being able to communicate with each other in such an easy way, don't they? Yeah. 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 Um, and look, uh, the you know my putting together my the inner circle, my membership area um, has you know has been such an exciting and um, uh, I don't know, overwhelming almost in some ways kind of prospect that that the, this community of, of like-minded people has come together um, and we're able to sort of share these fantastic ideas and keep challenging each other. As, as you say, I think it is, um, it's definitely an opportunity that has arisen in the last few years and it's, it's just becoming more and more kind of popular because it's about people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and one of the, I think one of the brilliant things that you've done is rather than just open up just a community for all musicians, you focus on a very specific niche, the piano teachers, because they, you know, their needs better than, you know, better than anyone. And so I think that's another thing that, that's, that's the people can learn from your playbook. Find your niche. You, mm. it's, it's not trying to reach a million people. It's not trying to reach a hundred thousand people. Find 1000 followers. And you can make a great living no matter what you're doing. But find 1,000 truly dedicated followers. That's the key. Not to try to be all over the map, but to find your focus and do it well. Mm. So, Hugh, how do people go about How would a, a new piano teacher who's interested in expanding their reach, how do they build a following like that? Now, I know this is a huge topic, but just some simple steps perhaps to get started. Where would you say to me, if I was a new piano teacher, I'm like, yeah, I want to I have a bigger impact here. What would you say I start doing to build that following? Again, it's going to be the relationships you build. You know, it, it's going to be... The, the, you know, it's interesting. I was just attending a branding conference in Philadelphia. The most important tool you have is not what you say, but how you listen. If you're not out there listening to people, you're going to have no idea what to do. Too many businesses, too many entrepreneurs, they think they have the, the best idea in the world. And they go out and they just push it on everybody. And nobody cares. And then their businesses fail mm. because they haven't taken the time to actively listen to the needs of other people. So the first step, if you're interested in going to business, isn't, okay, I've got to come up <clears throat> with some great idea that's going to sell a million bucks. The first step, again, reach out, make genuine friends, find ways to be helpful in whatever way you think serves best. And then you will find out if people appreciate your help. As you hone that in and then listen more carefully to the needs of other people, the product will, your whatever, we, I hate to say product because musicians aren't used to thinking about that, but the service or the idea that you can come up with, we will just use the word product for mm, now, yep. will make itself very, very clear. Mm. But the key is you need to make friends. And, and I know many musicians they, they might have a Facebook page, but they, they're very secret. They don't open it up to anybody. <laughs> you know, make friends. Again, you know, just be, be judicious. Don't be crazy. But, you know, connect with other people. Don't be shy. And pianists, we don't have the luxury of being in orchestras or being in bands. We're very isolated mm, creatures. Absolutely. You know, so it's, it takes us even more effort for us to reach out and, and make friends and meet people. And that's why... I know you were just at the MTNA conference. What was mm. it, San, San Antonio? Mm. Yeah. Those are great opportunities. It, it, it may be expensive, yes, but it's worth the investment, not in terms of what you get back immediately, but in terms of the friends you make, the relationships you build. That is the investment. And, and, I, and first, invest in yourself. Invest in your own education. Mm. Invest in growing and learning, asking questions. Then I think the products, the, the, the business itself – Having a business becomes almost mechanical after that point. Once you've discovered something that people really, really need, then it's just a matter of nuts and bolts. And you can really find lots of resources on the internet to do just about anything you need to do. The hard thing is getting the idea and then implementing it, having the passion to implement it. Mm. 
And I, you know, I'm very excited to know and, and hear a little bit more about what you've done because uh, you know a lot of teachers might be thinking, well, this all sounds great, but actually, what do I do? I need some help. I've never done this before. I'm not business trained, um, and that's why I th- I think you've you've come up with your own kind of group that's supporting teachers think and act business in a business kind of way. So right. tell you've talked you've talked and you've um, been very kind um, to <laughs> explore my. Um, in a circle, but tell us about oh, what I'm, you're doing. I absolutely admire what you're doing. And it's funny because you and I are like stone sharpening stones. I'm learning <laughs> from you. I admire you and follow you, and I appreciate your generosity in, in teaching me and helping me to grow. So I've started. So inter- like as I mentioned back in November uh, this past year, I launched a musical life podcast, and really had no idea what I was going to do. I just knew a, I wanted to have a show. I, I was the interesting thing was um, I was trying to promote. Uh, my online piano school by getting interviews and finding podcast shows. And then I discovered there really aren't that many podcasters out there that are interviewing musicians, musicians. like me, mm. classical mm. musicians, you know, rock, you know, all the other pop venues. Yeah. But classical musicians, there's almost nobody out there. So the light bulb went on in my head. It's like, hmm, wait a minute. I think there's an opportunity here. So I launched the show. I was very excited and, to hear you were doing this, by the way. I thought, yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And, and it's, it's really just meant not just for classical music, but to, you know, for a whole wide, I eventually want to get more and more genres in there. But with the podcast, then I, I started thinking about, well, I want to help people more directly. And so it was interesting. I was re- there was another friend of mine who was trying to launch a podcast. And was struggling a little bit with some of the audio issues. And I just reached out to her and said, hey, if you need some help, uh, you might want to try this, this, and that. And just, just, just gave her some technical advice. And she got so excited. She just kept you know, asking more and more questions, was hungry to look. So, again, I was more than happy to help out because I wanted to see her succeed. And then suddenly the light bulb went on. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> you get a lot of light bulbs, don't you, Hugh? <laughs> <laughs> I do. That's why my, my face is so shiny. So I started thinking that it, it, and so she started getting excited about, you know, I had all these friends that could benefit from this. And so that's what gave me the idea to start a mastermind. And it's really, uh, it, the, our, the, a musical life mastermind is intended, as you mentioned, to teach everything that I've learned from starting a tech company, you know, to also just being a musician that's performed around the world, performed at Carnegie Hall, made a, over a dozen records you can find on iTunes. But the combination, it's very rare to find, I think, musicians who are also have has, have have had the tech experience, business experience, arts experience. Absolutely. So I to, my dream, really, because I see so many young people graduating from conservatories, from college music schools, and I worry about them because they they come back to me, you know, a couple of years later, struggling. Like I just don't know how to make a living, and I I, I do uh, I accompany the auditions for for some orchestras, and I see the stress that these poor people have you have a field of a couple hundred people whittled down to three or four there's a black screen and your life is on the line for 10 minutes and then if you don't get it then what you know and so my passion is to try to help musicians uh, from all different walks of life to say you know there are other ways that you can make a living it doesn't depend on just winning a job winning an audition winning a competition if you want you can learn how to take control of your own career and learn some of the things that I've learned that I want to pass on so that all musicians can feel like they're not just at the whim of an orchestra collapsing or a music school that only pays, you know, barely minimum wage or just part-time work here or there. But they can find ways to make not just a living, but a lucrative living and, and re- living and think much larger in terms of the possibilities of going to business for themselves mm. and learning that business is an art. You know, and there's an art to business. So it's you know, if people want to learn more, I have they can simply go to a musical life mastermind. You can see the website over here, a musical life and uh, just check it out over there. Yep, and it's a uh, it's a place that Hugh's been very kind to invite me into. So I've uh, I've been giving my sort of thoughts and asking questions as well because you know I've got plenty of questions um, to learn from you about as well. In fact, I'm uh, um, I'm giving some keynote speeches over here in Australia in the next uh, month or so about um, it's to music education, music technology education conferences, and my keynote's about. Uh, 
it's for teachers and trying to help them um, think more about the technology, the use of technology and how can that can impact students yes. once they leave school or leave college. Um, because as you say, you know, the, the chance of a piano major becoming a professional musician pianist is it, – it's – just so small um, in reality um, and I, I, I don't know what goes on in, in piano courses these days around the world but um, I hope that there's more education going on about business and actually what you can do. I mean, there's obviously teaching. If you're not going to perform, you can teach but, you know, there's so many other opportunities out there so I'm going to be talking about that. I'll have to uh, use maybe use some of these um, little bites I've got from you as well but um, this is exactly the sort of support that you're giving people, which I think is fantastic because your experience is, as you say, you, you don't get a, a, a concert pianist who's also a runner tech company um, who's, who's also running a podcast and interviewing fantastic people. You know, it's such a great mix. So um, I'm just really happy to be able to connect my audience with yours, Hugh, as we've done in the previous podcast um, yeah. and keep those synergies going because we've just got so much to learn from each other. Absolutely. And I think, again, this is the beautiful thing about these communities. Uh, I, I, one of the things that I think you and I model really well, Tim, is not the <coughs> – I think musicians sometimes get very defensive, like, oh, these are my fingerings. These are my notes. I'm not going to share them with anybody. Ridiculous. Yeah. You know, when, <laughs> yeah. It, it, you know you're going to be you're going to be known and you're going to be off in your own world and you won't connect with anybody else. When you, it, the, the new paradigm, when you are generous – that generosity returns to you. Mm. So when you share that amazing tip you have for teaching two against three rhythm or that amazing tip for getting that four-year-old to pay attention and get her excited, you know what? You become an authority and you become trusted. And the, the, your generosity, believe me, the more you give, the more comes back. So mm. it, it's such a delight to, to contribute to your site and you know, just an honor to have you in mine as well. And and I hope this, that we show an example for other teachers to open up their worlds to other teachers as well. Don't be shy. Mm. I'm going to be sharing some of my tips in your, you know, in your site as well. In fact, I just recorded a video about how I use an iPad in a pretty simple but very innovative way. I'm going to be posting that Ooh, video. Ooh, good. Yeah, oh, excellent. It's a lot of fun. So little, little things like that, but we can all, when we grow together, when we learn together, when we impact the world together, more people will fall in love with playing the piano. More students will get excited. Our profession will elevate because we've helped each other elevate. That's the key. We mm. cannot do this alone. Mm. I mean, and, and my goal with my community and all the stuff that I do is to see if we can change piano pedagogy around the yeah. world to really elevate it. And that's exactly what you're talking about. And I think we can. Absolutely. And to Absolutely. be honest, I think we are doing it already. When when I see the change from the conferences I've attended in the last probably six years or so, there is so much more talk about being creative, um, about you know, composing isn't such a, an odd thing to be doing with students anymore. Um, it might yeah. be a bit a bit unusual for some teachers, but everyone's talking about it. And, um, you know, the, the 12 Bar Blues, the video that I recorded on that, what, eight, I don't know how many years ago um, is now, you know, everyone's doing that now. So it's, you know, things are moving in the right direction, which is so exciting. Now, look, before we wrap up, Hugh, I'd really love to set our viewers a bit of an action plan. So can you think of, I don't know, maybe three or five steps? We've kind of talked about them, but let's summarize them now of things that piano teachers can do right now to sort of see what kind of an impact they can have in their own business or in, you know, in generally expanding their influence around the world? Number one, get a website. If you don't have a website, you need one. Fortunately, it's never been easier to build one. Again, I, I want to caution teachers, you don't have to have the perfect website, but you have to have one. Mm. Getting started will give you the inertia you need to learn how to improve it. All of us, we're, we're all learning how to put these things together, our businesses. It's never a, like it's a never perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's never perfect. Yeah. And, and that's the same thing for business. We're going to always learn and improve. That's the key. Don't be afraid to always mm. learn and improve, but you must get started. What about uh, Facebook have website, pages? A Facebook page is good enough? Uh, no, a Facebook page is not good enough. Why not? A Facebook page is a start. Social media, I always believe, is our satellites. Okay, so you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you might have Yelp or LinkedIn. 
but you don't control the terms and conditions of those sites. Things can change on a dime. You also have the distractions of other posts and other ads interfering with your message. I was just speaking with a young musician who doesn't have a website, who has a Facebook page, and is you know selling something. There's a tiny button <laughs> for the shop hidden somewhere on that Facebook page. I can't. I couldn't find. It took me five minutes to find it. He doesn't have any control over the design of his page outside of certain parameters. Facebook controls that. Yeah. Now, Facebook is useful for building. You need a Facebook page for building relationships. But those satellite sites need to direct to your site because your site is where you have all the control. Mm. Your focus, your message, your design, your image, all of those things. And, of course, you can start to collect contact information, email addresses from the people who visit. Mm. And then... Email is still one of the most powerful ways to grow, to connect, to advertise, and to inform the people who are interested in you. You must have a website. If you have a website already, you need to optimize it. Now, I've seen so many musicians' websites that were made about 10 years ago, and they look like they were made 10 years ago. <laughs> and, and one basic thing is, is your, here's a question. Is your website responsive? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> you, know, you need to Google, check it. Yeah Google, yeah, Google is going to penalize you because with the with you know smartphones, small screens, tablets, if your site does not change shape to optimize for smaller screens, it's not responsive. A responsive website can change sites to fit smaller dimensions. It mm. is critical that you make sure your website is responsive. Again, and, and Google have said, haven't they, very clearly, if you aren't responsive, you won't rank as highly as those who are. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. It's going to be harder to find your site, and Google's yeah. going to purposely bury you down further. So, yep. very critical. So, make sure your site is optimized. Make sure it's simplified. Too many words, and no yeah. action, you no know, call to actions. So, again, if you come to my site, a musical life mastermind.com, there's three short questions you can answer. And then I actually have a book on how to build a website that talks about all these things for musicians and how to optimize it for your practice. So, if you don't have social media, get social media. You do need a Facebook page. You do need a Twitter account. And I would say a LinkedIn or a Yelp account. Some people say Yelp. Well, that's, isn't that for restaurants? Also, it's, believe it or not, it's also for music teachers. Well, it's free. So, so there's no harm in doing it, is there? Exactly. Yeah. And the key thing is use those sites to engage in different ways. Facebook is great for creating relationships. Twitter is great for communicating. And Yelp is just a yellow page for people can find you mm. locally. Yep. But point all those things to your website. And if you're not putting together those elements, that would be my immediate call to action. You need those things to even begin to start having a roadmap in the new digital terrain, which is, which is the new reality. If you don't have a digital footprint, you're going to be very limited in terms of how you grow or how fast you grow and how much you can grow. Mm. And when we're talking about growing an audience, building you know, followers, you know, the, the best way to do that, of course, is to be out there digitally um, and perhaps, you know, put some articles out there in the blog kind of format, which is how I Absolutely. started. Uh, yep. Just sharing ideas. Suddenly people search for those ideas in Google. They come to your site. Um, and you, you've used these words call to action a couple of times. Now, some people might yes. not know what that means. Um, in the online business kind of sense, that's the... Um, the call to ask you on the page to do something. So is it click, click it here is, to leave it, your email? It is a button. You yep. need a button. It's yep. a very simple button that says contact me or buy now or yep. schedule a lesson. It has to be super simple and it has to be and it has to be above the fold. It can't be hidden down at the bottom of the page. The first thing somebody sees right in the middle of the page needs to be a button that simply gets them to do something. Yep. You can decide what that is, but it should be simple direct and easy for them to make a decision to do it or leave. <laughs> yep. And you'll see this as soon as you go to your website, you've got two options, I think, from memory. You've got a great picture of you, two options. That's your call to action. Um, and, and I'd be suggesting for teachers, if you're not already collecting um, contact details, as you say, some email addresses of the people coming to your website so that you can continue to keep in touch with them, that would be a top priority, I think. Sorry, we've got three on the list for the websites. Maybe that's the fourth one, but I'd put that up there quite highly. Yeah, but again, this can seem overwhelming. So like, oh, website technology, and it's particularly, I think, for musicians, there's, most of us are scared of technology. It's intimidating. Again, get help. There's a lot of help out there, not just Googling out or looking on YouTube. Get the kind of help that you'll find at Tim's site because you can mm. ask these questions and have real people 
help you, walk you through, answer your questions. Don't be afraid to ask. Get help. Get connected. You don't have to know all these things on your own. Tim and I, we're just outlining some of the basics, which you can review. But once you understand generally what you need to do, the specifics, go to Tim's site, ask for help, and more than likely, one of us will come alongside and say, hey, this is what you need to do, and bounce some ideas back and forth, and we'll just get started. Start with a website, start with a social media, and then ask for help, and you'll get it, because we all want to see each other succeed. Exactly. Exactly right. That's the that's the new way of doing things, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 It's a beautiful, it's, you know, it's one of the most beautiful things about, I think, the internet, because it is whole, it's holding businesses accountable. You have a bad product, everybody's going to know about it. If mm. a bad movie, everybody's going to pan it. Mm. If you have a good product, people can know about it. It holds us accountable. So if, if we're, if we're bad people, <laughs> if we're selfish and if we're, if we're insulting, nobody's going to want to do business with you. Exactly. But if you're, if you're kind and generous and helpful and genuine in who you are, everybody wants to connect with that kind of a person. So be that good person that you are. And the business will come. Don't mm. worry. Yep. Hey, Hugh, it's been so great talking with you again today. Always, always good to catch up with you. Um, uh, is there anything that we haven't kind of uh, covered that you wanted to um, to discuss before we finish up? I mean, we've we've just scratched the surface, but it's just been great to get people thinking. And I love your dream, uh, your dream idea. One, <laughs> a one, one. A dr- what do you call it? A dream hour. A dream hour, yeah, a dream hour. Every, I mean, first thing I do every morning is to do a dream hour. But let's see. The last thing I think I want to leave folks with is. Tim and I, we're going to do something really, really big. <laughs> Not yet. Stay, stay tuned, everyone. There's, there's we're, things we're, in the works. Tim and I have been talking. We're aiming something pretty amazing together that'll knock your socks off. So yeah. send some good energy our way because <laughs> uh, Tim is phenomenal. He is a leader, a true, you know, I mean, an artistic leader, a, a pedagogical leader, a tech leader. And I want to align myself with somebody like that. So we're going to try to think of something really cool to share with everybody that I think everybody will benefit from, be inspired by, and we're going to just knock it out of the park, right, yep. Tim? And it's going to be an absolute blast doing it with you, Hugh. Thank you. Yep. And thank you for all your lovely comments today. You know, it, it, the, the feeling is 100% mutual. You're doing incredible things, and that's why I'm more than happy to share what you're doing as well as what I'm doing. Um, now, look, you better just remind people, where can they find your podcast? Where do they find your mastermind? The podcast is amusicallife.com. And then the mastermind is simply a musical life mastermind.com. Nice one. And do you, is your, I assume your podcast is on iTunes. Is it video or audio only? It is audio only. So it's on iTunes, Stitcher, pretty much any podcast playing app. You can just do a search for a musical life. Don't forget a, a musical life. And it's, uh, it's very easy to find. And it's incredible. I, I find that you know, there's something about your voice. I don't know what you do to it. You have a pot, you put on your podcast voice and it's like, oh, I can just, I don't know. It's just I a relaxing. To, now, I can go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've been told my voice puts people to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of like um, you know friends. We joke about the um, the classic FM channel. Uh, you know people on there. They're all they're all got these kind of low voices, and it's very calm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you're like. But it's great. I've I really enjoyed your interviews, and um, you're on my list of ones that I follow. So I Thank certainly you. encourage everyone to check that out. Thank you. And, and there's a lot of very interesting careers. That- you know, th- as you and I are doing, as we're interviewing these different people, we're learning about how they've succeeded, how mm. they've come to find the success that they're enjoying. And so listening to your you know, podcast as well, you're going to learn about creative ways to teach. Listening to A Musical Life, you're going to listen to, and I try to ask the really hard questions. Well, how much are you making? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, how, how did you get started? And wh- what about this difficulty here? And you hear these amazing answers of how creative some of these careers have been in terms of breaking into the film industry, breaking the TV, breaking onto the stage or creative ways of connecting so that their careers really took off. So mm. listen to some of these people. They're amazing and they're humans. You know, they're just people who've done extraordinary things, but you can do the same thing too. Yep, yep. Well, you let me know. When you finish with Yo-Yo Ma, you give me a call and I'll uh, come and chat with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hugh, great speaking with you and we'll keep, keep in touch. Look forward to chatting All again right. soon. Thanks for your time today. Tim, thank you so much for having me on your show. All right. You're welcome. Bye. 
If the idea of a piano teacher's community where you get to access the best educational resources, rub shoulders with expert teachers from around the world, and have immediate access to feedback for any of your questions, then Inner Circle membership is for you. The Inner Circle is my private community of piano teachers from across the globe who share a commitment to creating and delivering the most inspiring, modern, and progressive learning experiences for their students. Membership is now open, so head to timtopham.com forward slash community to find out more and get involved today. I can't wait to see you on the inside.